Hello students, uh, welcome back to your botany class. And in the previous classes, we have uh, discussed about uh, the search for DNA as a genetic material. And in this class, we have discussed about the molecular structure of DNA. So today, uh, let's see the replication of DNA, how DNA replicates. Okay, so you must be familiar with uh, the cell cycle uh, in your class 11, where uh, the cell divides mitotically and meiotically. So, you know that in a cell cycle, there are two phases, that is the interphase and the division, or division phase. So, uh, this interphase is the phase between two successive division, and interphase consists of G1, S, and G2 phases. So, there are three phases in interphase, G1, S, and G2, and it is in this S phase of the cell cycle, or in the S phase of the interface where DNA replicates or that the amount of DNA doubles in its amount. And subsequently, only after doubling the amount or doubling the uh, number of DNA, the cell undergoes division and subsequently the uh, cell di uh, uh, divides and gives the equal number of chromosomes into the daughter cells. So, uh, this replication of DNA takes place in the uh, S phase of the cell cycle and it says that it lasts about 7 hours uh, in uh, uh, eukaryotic cell. Well, in case of uh, prokaryotic cells, it, uh, for example, uh, the E. coli bacteria, it takes around only 20 minutes for the whole cell cycle for replication to take place. Okay. So, uh, it takes place in the S, uh, S phase of the cell cycle in uh, both pro and eukaryotic and this uh, re uh, DNA replication, the speciality with this is that it replicates semi-conservatively, semi-conservatively in a sense that the parental strain, the parental strain, each of, we know that uh, DNA is a double helix, it consists of two polynucleotide chains and during replication, these two parental strands, they separate and they direct the synthesis of new, parent, uh, new daughter strands in such a way that the new daughter DNA molecule which are synthesized, it consists of one parental strand and one new strand. So, uh, in other words, each daughter molecule, uh, DNA molecule uh, consists of one parental strand, one old strand and a new strand. So, there is a semi-conservation, semi, half of the parental strand is conserved and it's passed on to the daughter cell. So, uh, that is known as a semi-conservative replication of DNA and the semi-conservative replication of DNA was proposed by Mrs. Uh, Watson and Crick in 1953. However, uh, it was uh, in 1958, uh, Messelson and Stoll, they experimentally proved that the semi-conservative replication of DNA they are using the bacteria E. coli. So uh, in the experiment, they grew E. coli cells in a culture medium containing a uh, heavy isotope of nitrogen and 15. And uh, after one uh, cycle of, uh, after allowing them to grow for some certain period of time, they extracted the DNA and they, uh, uh, by centrifugation using cesium chloride solution, and the next step, they found out that uh, all the DNA molecule contain this uh, heavy isotope of nitrogen, uh, which is the only uh, source of nitrogen. And in the next step, they cultured this DNA uh, molecule containing heavy uh, isotope of nitrogen in a culture medium containing the normal nitrogen. So they allow the heavy uh, DNA molecule to be cultured in a culture medium containing the normal nitrogen. And after one round of replication, they extracted the DNA uh, by centrifugation and they analyzed to uh, the observation that uh, the DNA molecule produced it's a hybrid between the heavy nitrogen and the light nitrogen. So the DNA uh, daughter DNA molecules or the new uh, daughter molecules produced, they are hybrid, each consisting of one parental strand and one newly synthesized strand. Then they allowed this daughter DNA molecules, hybrid DNA molecules to undergo another round of replication and they found out that in the next round of replication, the second, uh, second cycle or the second daughters, they found out that half of it contained the hybrid and half of it contained the light DNA. It, uh, half of it contained the hybrid consisting of uh, 
uh, heavy nitrogen as well as ni light nitrogen, while half of it, 50% of it, consisting of light nitrogen only. So from this experiment, they concluded that DNA replicates semi-conservatively. That is, each daughter DNA molecule produced consists or contains one parental strand and one newly synthesized strand. So Masson and Stoll, they, uh, uh, they proved experimentally the semi-conservative replication of DNA. And so now uh, let's look into the detailed mechanism. How does DNA replicate um, in detail? Okay, uh, we know that uh, DNA is a double helix and it consists of two polynucleotide chains and these two polynucleotide uh, chains are anti-parallel. They run in opposite direction. One runs in uh, 3 prime to 5 prime and the other strand runs from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. And uh, in the previous class, we have learned that the phosphate, the sugar, they are the backbone of the uh, DNA molecule or the backbone of the polynucleotide chain, while the uh, bases which are stacked towards the helix, they are connected to one another, are bonded to, uh, bonded to each other by means of hydrogen bond and they give the appearance of a staircase. So now, uh, for replication to take place, the prerequisite is that these two parental strands, the two strands of DNA has to separate. They have to separate and only then they uh, initiate the process of uh, replication. So for the two strands to separate, the hydrogen bonds which exist in between these complementary uh, base pairs, which uh, complementary base pairs of the two nucleotide chains, the hydrogen bond has to be broken down. The hydrogen bonds has to be broken down and only then the replication will be initiated. So there is a particular enzyme known as helicase. There is a particular enzyme known as helicase which is responsible for breaking down these hydrogen bonds present in between the complementary base pairs of the two nucleotide chains. So this helicase breaks down the hydrogen bonds and then it opens, it separates out the two polynucleotide chains or the two parental strands, uh, giving like the appearance of an un unzipping of a zip. So uh, 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 breaking down of the hydrogen bonds between the complementary base pairs, it also uh, creates a fork-like uh, appearance, which is also known as replication fork. So this helicase breaks down the hydrogen bonds and uh, as the two uh, strands are, as the two polynucleotide chains in helix are, they are coiled around one another. They are coiled around one another and as uh, they are separated, there is always a tendency for the two strands to recoil back again. There is always a tendency for these two separated strands to recoil back towards uh, like the original again. So until unless that tension uh, of recalling back is removed, the two strands will not be able to separate out. So that uh, recalling tension is uh, released by the enzyme topoi isomerase, which is responsible for cutting one strand of the DNA. It cuts a nick, it produces a nick in one strand of the DNA and releases the tension and then reseal back the cut ends uh, so that the uh, tendency or the tension to recall back is removed and thereby the two strands are separated. Now, uh, there are also certain proteins known as single strand binding proteins, which usually binds to one strand and gives stability to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to a single strand during the process of a replication without interfering with the process. It gives stability to the single strands. Now, uh, as the two strands are separated by the breaking down of the hydrogen bond, the tension being released, now this enzyme known as DNA polymerase starts initiating the process of replication. DNA polymerase is the enzyme which is responsible for uh, aiding nucleotides to, or is, which is, the, is the enzyme which is responsible for synthesizing the new nucleotides uh, for the synthesis of new daughter DNA molecule. So uh, this DNA polymerase, uh, reading the uh, bases present on the template strand, on the, uh, this parental strand, they are also referred to as the template strand, and they direct the synthesis of the new daughter strand. So 
Depending upon the bases that are present on the template strain, this DNA polymerase, they, uh, they add the new uh, bases uh, into, uh, into the uh, daughter molecule uh, simultaneously. So the presence of uh, C in the template strain would indicate the presence or will uh, determine the presence of the base guanine in the daughter strain or the presence of the base adenine in the template strain will determine the presence of the uh, nucleotide or the base th uh, thymine in the daughter strain. So this, uh, the addition or the synthesizing of the new daughter strain is done by the uh, enzyme DNA polymerase, uh, uh, taking into uh, account the types of the bases that are present in the template strain. However, However, uh, this DNA polymerase can direct the synthesis of the new daughter strand in 5' prime to 3' prime direction only. So this DNA polymerase, no doubt it is responsible for uh, bringing in the, or it's bringing in the new, uh, new bases or synthesizing the DNA molecules, but it can catalyze or it can synthesize the new daughter molecule in 5' prime to 3' prime direction only. In a sense that this, uh, it would add bases towards the three prime hydroxyl end or the free uh, three prime hydroxyl end of the sugar molecule only. So the presence of this is uh, necessary. The presence of a free three prime hydroxyl group is necessary, and so this. Only uh, after the presence of this, after this 3 prime N sugar is, aid, uh, is present in the uh, new daughter strand, only then this DNA polymerase can go on adding the nucleotides. So uh, this DNA, this uh, 3 prime N is due to uh, requisite requirement for DNA polymerase and it's also known as RNA primer, which consists of a sequence of, some sequence of uh, nucleotides, RNA nucleotides. So RNA primer or primer is required for the subsequent addition of the nucle uh, new bases by the enzyme DNA polymerase. As and only when this primer is present, then DNA polymerase can go on adding the bases. So uh, this RNA, pr RNA primer, which consists of uh, some uh, sequences of nucleotides, they are responsible for uh, adding, they are responsible for initiating or subsequent addition of the uh, bases by the DNA polymerase. So now, this uh, DNA polymerase can catalyze only in three, uh, five prime to three prime direction, and we know that these two polynucleotide chains they run in opposite direction. One runs from three prime to five prime direction, and the other from five prime to three prime direction. So they are anti-parallel, and so since it can catalyze the synthesis of new daughter strand in five prime to three prime direction only. That means the parental strand which runs from three prime to five prime will, there's a continuous synthesis. The parental strand which runs from three prime to five prime, there is continuous synthesis of new daughter DNA strand. While the parental strand which runs from five prime to three prime is opposite, it lies opposite to this DNA polymerase. As such in this uh, case, the DNA strand, the new daughter DNA strands are synthesized in fragments. They are synthesized in fragments and these fragments, they are known as Okazaki fragments or this, uh, it's also known as legging strand or discontinuous strand, while the other strand where there is continuous synthesis of DNA, daughter DNA uh, strand, it is known as leading strand or uh, continuous strand. Okay, so it, they are also known as Okazaki fragments in case of a uh, legging strand, uh, named after the scientists who first discovered it. And once uh, the replication, the process of replication is uh, completed, these RNA primers are removed from these uh, new strands and the ends are jointed, forming a continuous strand, even in case of the leading strand. So this is how replication takes place in case of uh, DNA uh, semi-conservatively and it is catalyzed by the enzyme pol DNA polymerase. So once now the process of re replication is completed, once the process of replication is completed, this DNA polymerase will again come back to the track. It will again come back to the track 
and it will give a proofreading. They will proofread whether there is any mistake in the uh, presence of any or if there is any mistake in the sequence of any basis. If this DNA polymerase detects that there is a mistake in the presence of, uh, example, when uh, there is the presence of C, which is a mistake, it will result in mutation, uh, which can be lethal. So this DNA polymerase will pr give a proofread and it will remove the wrong base and then add the correct base, adenine, uh, which bears with thiamine. So this DNA polymerase has got two functions, endonucleus and exonucleus. It can uh, it can remove the wrong base and uh, subsequently it can aid the correct base pairs. So proofreading is uh, a very important function of DNA polymerase to check whether there is any mistake or any wrong base pairs in this. So at the end of replication, uh, as the replication forks proceeds, this uh, parent DNA molecule will produce uh, uh, daughter DNA molecules which consist of one parental strand, one parental strand, and one newly synthesized strand, one parental strand, and one newly uh, synthesized strand, which uh, proves the semi-conservative replication of DNA. And uh, in case of prokaryotes, uh, in case of prokaryotes, the process of replication begins at one end of DNA. It begins at one end of DNA and it proceeds towards uh, the other end, and it is unidirectional. It proceeds. From, uh, it starts from one end of DNA and it proceeds uh, towards the other end or other direction. It's one, uh, it's one direction or unidirectional. While in case of E carrots, uh, due to the presence of a huge amount of bases, due to the presence of huge amount of bases, there are many sites or there are uh, many places where this replication of DNA can be initiated. So those places or those areas where uh, replication of DNA uh, starts, they are also known as uh, origin of replication. So in E. carrots, because of the uh, presence of uh, or huge uh, or large size of the DNA molecule, there are multiple sites of origin. There are multiple sites of origin as compared to prokaryotes, which have a comparatively lesser uh, base pairs of a uh, small DNA molecule, uh, where they it is or uh, unidirectional. While in case of E. carrots, there are uh, multiple sites of origin and the directional. Is, uh, and the, uh, the direction of this uh, replication is both directional. It can, it starts from one side, it can proceed both the sides. So in case of prokaryotes, it's bi-directional, while in case of, uh, uh, in case of e carrots it is bi-directional, while in case of prokaryotes, it is unidirectional. So this is how uh, the semi-conservative replication of DNA takes place, and uh, as we have said, uh, it takes place in the S phase of the cell cycle. And uh, in prokaryotes, uh, it, in, for example, bacteria, it takes only around 20 minutes. But in case of E. carrots, uh, it lasts the S phase, where synthesis or DNA, the amount of DNA double, doubles, and then only subsequently only enters enters into the division phase. It lasts for about seven hours, and uh, each of the newly synthesized DNA molecule consists of one parental strand and one daughter strand, and whereby proving that DNA replicates semi-conservatively. So this is the uh, experimentally it was proved by Musselson and Stoll, while the mechanism was uh, studied detailed in this way, consisting of the enzyme helicase, enzyme topoisomerase, and the enzyme SSB polymerase. And of course, this uh, single strand are the fragments they are joined together by the enzyme DNA the gates which are responsible for creating a continuous strain again. Okay, so with this, I went up this replication of DNA.